Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to do a little Q&A. I got a cool email by a guy named Woody Sherwood. He's working on a 1967 Volkswagen Beetle. It's his first Beetle, his first restoration project, so I guess he's a little overwhelmed. He doesn't know where to start and he uh, asked me like how do I break down the car and how do I put things into manageable tasks and categorize things and is there a step-by-step -step procedure to restoring the Beetle? Of course there's steps to restoring your Beetle, but if I was to give you all those details in one sitting here on this video, it would take hours and hours uh, to explain and to show you and that's why I got over 300 videos on YouTube for you guys to follow on all different aspects of restoration and if I was to type and reply to that email it would be pages and pages of text so we're not going to do that we're going to do an express route today uh, get your pen and paper uh, handy and we're going to start jotting some stuff down but first and foremost there are things on the market today that you can still purchase uh, to help you along the way. I know it sounds kind of old school to go back into a book or a DVD or something, but it's still very helpful to do that. Um, there's a How to Restore the Volkswagen Beetle by Jim Tyler. You're going to want to maybe pick up one of those. Probably get them on eBay now, real cheap. Um, you also got uh, How to Keep Your Volkswagen Alive, one of the very popular books by Jim Moore. And uh, everybody should have this in their tool chest. It's definitely something that you're going to want. Get a Bentley manual as well. Uh, get on board with them. Uh, and look into the BugMeVideo.com DVD series. He's got so many volumes of DVDs there. Now you don't even have to get the DVD. You can rent the disc and you can watch it online. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. And I, I learned from uh, Rick Higgins and the Bug Me videos uh, and got me going with my business. So uh, you, you definitely going to want to get those. And JBugs has a couple DVDs that you can pick up on interior and exterior restoration. So hone up on all that stuff. But get a pen and paper handy. And uh, we're going to start diving in right now uh, my express step-by-step -step route to gutting and restoring your beetle and putting it back on the road all right let's get to it okay let's go you and me me and you step one pad pen get ready guys here we go number one strip and gut the beetle don't throw away anything. Categorize, label, tag, mark, photograph. When you're taking your bug apart, start photographing things as you're taking it apart. First of all, we like to have a restoration book. I always make a book for all my bugs and to not have pictures of the resto process is kind of silly. We want to show this afterwards to people. You want to show it online or you can make a book with Shutterfly like I do and it's very presentable. But take photos to so you remember how things go back together. Uh, a lot of times you're taking wires apart and you don't know where the wires go, so at least uh, you know, shoot some of that stuff so you can remember. Um, you're going to want to buy storage bins uh, because if we're gutting the whole car and we're taking the motor out, we're taking the seals out, we're taking the wires and the chrome and the, the interior and the insulation and all that stuff, all the garnishings, all the, the fender beads and the, the headlights, all that stuff, I like to gut the car. We're going to have to store these things, right? So go to Home Depot, pick up some those large plastic bins that they sell and uh, I pick up maybe three or four so you have a bin for interior, exterior, motor, start categorizing, start separating and labeling things so next time when it goes back to put the car back together uh, you know it makes life a lot easier so uh, this is also the area where I like to unbolt the chassis so if you have a you know a location maybe you got some horses or something that you can set up again the, the bug me video series shows you how to take the body off the chassis or there's definitely videos online unbolt the chassis, bag the, the bolts and uh, I usually leave four bolts that hold the body down to the chassis. So you have the four, the two bolts on the rear shock tower area, and you got the two bolts uh, up front by the gas tank. And uh, I leave those in for the painter. Now, once you have the car all gutted and it's separated and everything's out of the car uh, from all the seals and the motor and all that junk, now all of a sudden you have to look at this car and you got to say, all right, we're going to a painter. We got to find a good reputable painter look around your area and uh, try to stay close to your painter because I like to drive and pop in on them every now and then just to keep you know the fire under their butt to keep the car going um, and uh, you know you want to find someone who's also enthusiastic about working on this car I know a lot of guys work on insurance and that's their bread and butter but um, you know they, a lot of times they push you aside for a resto project but find somebody that's definitely into the resto stuff and wants to work on a car and really drill them on when a delivery date will be uh, but as you're uh, talking to the painter uh, you know kind of ask him questions how he likes certain things uh, most of my painters like it of course when the body's ready to come off the chassis 
And uh, I have everything boxed up. There's also the separate pieces boxed up and labeled, like the glove box door, the ashtray door, the tail lights, uh, semaphore covers, or things like that that need to be painted separately. Uh, put those in a separate box for him. Um, you're going to want to get all the sheet metal that's ready for the painter. So if you need a quarter panel rust repair, or you need a heater channel section, or you need floor pan sections, things like that done, you know, get those parts. Uh, ready for the painter so when you roll that shell in there he's got all the sheet metal that's necessary uh, to, to put the car back together for you. Okay so that was step two off to the paint shop. Step three is now working on the chassis so after the painter takes the uh, shell off the chassis I then usually drag the chassis back to my shop your, your home your place of well-being and you start working on the chassis it's the way they did it in the factory the shell was always separate from the chassis and it's a lot easier to do a lot of your mechanicals on the chassis when you have access to it and I have a video on that showing how to do all that stuff and uh, you know, it's definitely where, what you're going to want to do. So when you're looking at the chassis you're going to want to order parts for it of course from the shocks, the brakes, the brake lines, the steel lines, uh, axle boots, body, uh, body shock pad rubbers um, and, and things like that to uh, complete the chassis right there in front of you. So. Uh, you're ready to rock and roll when the car comes back. Get the pan gasket seal as well, and you're going to put that around the chassis. Uh, clean up the chassis. Anytime you got to do any sort of rust repair on the floor pans, or you want to paint the floor pans, is the best time to do it. We blast our chassis with a hot steam blaster before we do any of the uh, new parts going on. So you're going to want to clean it up and get that ready to go uh, before uh, the shell comes back. And in the meantime, while I'm ordering parts for the chassis, I also get on ordering the parts for the engine bay area. Uh, and your motor parts because at this time too I like to work on my motor and I, I buy the engine seals and uh, the tar boards and things like that so you're going to want that ready to go when uh, the shell comes down on the chassis. Um, I also order my interior because in, in today's day I use so fine in, in Colorado or even if you call up TMI or Lenny or West Coast Classics it's going to take weeks before you get the interior and a lot of this stuff is all done on demand today so you're looking at three to four weeks sometimes six weeks maybe even two months uh, before you get the interior in so get that loaded up and get that ready to go because uh, by the time the paint the car comes back from the paint shop it should be all there um, and also you order your wiring harness you want to get that in too because that's one of the things you're going to want to start on when the shell comes back from the painter. Um, so okay, order the parts, do the motor rebuild if you want to do a motor rebuild. If you don't want to do that then you know you just want to clean up the motor, paint the tins, that sort of thing. Get that all done now as the car is out of that paint. Uh, complete the rolling chassis. That's what you just want to do. Get that all complete. Paint up the rims as well, get new tires, get all that stuff that you need to complete the chassis. Uh, and also you want to paint up all the small pieces. So you got the, um, the steering column, you got the e-brake, um, you got the shifter that you got to paint, um, the, the inspection plate covers uh, and the trunk, uh, that, that sort of thing. All the little pieces that got to get painted up, you know, that's what you got to do now and you got to find the right color for each of those. So, All right, step three, that was kind of a mouthful. Let's go on to step four. Step four, okay, the body is back from paint. So hopefully you had a general idea of what color you want to paint this car before you send it off to the paint shop. Don't, got, don't get these guys all riled up and uh, with all different color changes that you got going because uh, that can kind of frustrate them after a while. So and paint is expensive today, so uh, we don't want to be ordering paint for one color and then all of a sudden you uh, change your mind in the middle of the process. That's uh, it's kind of expensive today. So uh, you get your body back from the paint shop, basically you get, a, you get a tow or bring the chassis back up to your painter and there hopefully the people at the paint shop can help you marry the body down to the chassis. Just bolt it down with a couple bolts, uh, four bolts would be ideal <laughs> and then uh, bring that back to the shop or your house, your place of being and start finishing the, uh, uh, the mounting process. So hopefully you bought some new pan bolts. Uh, when you assess your parts list for your, for your chassis, I always like to get new pan bolts and they give you the new washers as well. Uh, makes it look nice underneath. Now your pan is already painted and is ready to mount to the shell. Start mounting your body down to the chassis. Okay, step five. Uh, we have the body now married down to the chassis. All new hardware bolts to hold the body down. And uh, we got our painted pan and we got all of our parts in that we ordered prior. Uh, to the car coming back from the paint shop, which is your interior, the whole interior uh, kit, carpet kit, seat upholstery, foam padding, insulation, wires, wiring harness if you're going that route, and uh, all that stuff has now already been delivered to your place to where you're working on the car. That stuff should have been 
somewhat assembled. The seats could have been, the seat frames could have been painted up, assembled, ready to go when the car, so when the car comes back, you're ready to tackle the interior. Um, but now that we look at the rolling shell and we have that stuff on the side and we're ready to rock and roll on that, we can start now ordering parts before we tackle that stuff. And I like to make a list and start ordering parts, whether it's the chrome garnishings, the moldings, the fender beads, running boards, bumpers, bumper bracket supports, that sort of thing, little dash components, emblems, hood emblems, anything like that. Um, if you're going to be ordering these parts, I like to order in bulk. I religiously use CIP1.com or Wolfsburg West. Um, and I think CIP1 has the easier website to navigate when it comes to putting a big bulk parts list together. Try to get as much as you can in the parts list at one time. It's going to save you on shipping. CIP1 is free shipping because the more you keep ordering and you're forgetting things, you're paying more for shipping and things like that. So it gets kind of complicated. So I try to, uh, you know, max out my list at one shot so I can order things. Uh, and you might have to order from one or two other places. So. Uh, but that's what you do before you start tackling the car. Make the parts list because then those parts are going to probably take a week or two, maybe longer to come in. So that now gives you plenty of time to reassess the Beetle one more time before you start tackling it, right? And then you can now start on the interior. I like to work from the inside out. So we start with our wiring harness that we ordered prior and we're ready to go on the wires. So I jump in the car and I start rewiring the car. Bugmevideo.com has video on complete wiring. So definitely look into that. That's the nervous system of the bug. So if you ever watch any uh, assembly line videos like I have on my website, uh, The Shape of Quality, uh, Australian assembly line, they show step by step when the, when the car is going through the factory process, what steps they take. So wiring is probably one of the first things they do before anything else is put in. So you don't want to do wiring, you don't want to do insulation, all right, all the padding in the roof, I show those in headliner videos, the padding on the, the rear luggage area with the quick roof, like I like to use, or the Dynamat if you want to get that, uh, floor pan stuff, that sort of thing. And you're going to want to start insulating, and then you start putting in the interior, again, working from the inside out. Now, that, that alone is probably going to take you some time if you've never worked on a Beetle before or never did a restoration. So uh, that alone is going to take you some time. So. That's part six, actually. So you're going to start on the wires slash interior. That's step six. Okay. Step seven. Now you got your parts in, and now basically you just start putting things uh, back together. Uh, I got numerous videos on doing all the little tidbits on how to put things onto the beetle. Uh, but once you have your interior in place, uh, now you can start working on your doors, your scrapers, vent windows, fender beads. There's really no. Uh, you know, one step that has to go before the other. Once that's, that, that is done, once the interior is done and your wires are done, you can pretty much, um, you know, put things on or whatever you feel. I kind of just put the parts out on the table and I say, ah, you know what, that's the all right there. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to start working on that. So um, I like to clear my table first with some of the easier parts to put on, like the door seal, the uh, perimeter door seal is one of the easiest things to put on. So, um, and that's it, guys. Express route, I know it was quick. Um, if you guys got any questions whatsoever, email me, chris at classicvwbugs.com or visit my website, www.classicvwbugs.com. That is pretty much it. Follow my videos, buy some Bug Me videos, and um, you should be on your way. All right, guys, good luck. Um.